everybody. First take on a Wednesday. Stephen A. Smith in the house. Max Kellerman. I'm What's Molly Karam. Hi, guys. What's going on? Halfway What's through the week, gentlemen. Not that we're counting. Always having fun here. And uh, guess who else is joining us? Usher. Yeah. We have the new stars of the film Hands of Stone. That's in theaters this Friday. Usher and Edgar Ramirez will be joining us, so stay tuned for that. Now, but, Usher's gentlemen. A, Usher's a special individual. You do know that, right? I do. She I've seen same, him in concert. She has the same birthday. Oh, as you. It's a boy. You know, oh, it's always about you. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. You know what, now listen, I think of him differently. What about me? Yeah. What about me? <laughs> you guys ready to work? Yes, always. All right, let's do this. You knew there couldn't be a Josh Norman interview without the Odell Beckham Jr. question. Courtesy of ESPN, the magazine, this piece is also in newsstands Friday. So Norman spoke on the contentious matchup in week 15. We all remember this last season where Beckham was charged with three personal fouls saying... Everybody saw what he was. People from around the league were coming up to me afterward and saying, he does that crap all the time. He lost so much respect from people from that little tantrum. I've already got a couple people telling me, okay, I've got a hit out on him. It's going to be a rough for him this year, and he brought it on himself. Stephen A., Norman, friend of the show, is he going too far? He's absolutely going too far, and I think that Josh Norman's got to calm down because of some of the things that, you know, he says. We all know how panicky the league is in this day and age. Um, I know that Josh Norman's a good brother. I know that his heart's in the right place. Uh, he's got a mouth on him, but that has served him well, and he shouldn't be uh, condemned for that. We get all of that because when you come from Coastal Carolina and you work your way up to the ranks where you're being one of recognized one of the premier corners in the game, clearly he knows what's working for him, and the mouth is a part of it. Fair enough. But the flip side to it all is that when you say things like, you know, a hit out on a play and things of that nature, you know that the league is going to get its antennas up. That's just not smart. That's just not a smart thing to say. That's just not a smart thing to do. And for anybody that would try to dismiss it, understand that's not going to fly because the NFL is not going to dismiss it. The NFL is going to keep a keen eye on things. When you go up against the New York, against the New York Giants, the game could potentially be called tight. You see how many defensive players complain about the NFL all the time. This is what happens. They say you can't, you, you got bad breath. They'll call you for a penalty against these guys on offense in this day and age, especially one of the premier players in the league. And so when you've got Odell Beckham Jr., who's an absolute stud and a star on the rise to superstar status, when he goes up against Josh Norman, chances are he's going to get a lot of calls. If he keeps his head and he keeps his cool, chances are the league rules facilitate alone that he may end up getting the better of Josh Norman because Josh Norman may get penalized a whole bunch. You just never know. When you open your mouth, you put yourself in that kind of precarious situation, and Josh Norman is smarter than that, and you have to be smarter than that. For him to sit up there and to call out Odell Beckham Jr. that way, you're just inviting a significantly heightened level of, 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 of eyeballs and cynicism aimed in your direction. It's counterproductive to you. It's counterproductive to the Washington Redskins. It's counterproductive to all parties involved on your side because, again, the rules are stacked against you alone. So you got to know this kind of stuff, and you got to guard against it. And I don't think he's doing that at all. I think that he's been opening his mouth entirely too much since he's arrived in the nation's capital with his five-year, $75 million contract and $50 million guaranteed. He's going to tell you, I'm after it. I got to go get it. And he's definitely dedicated to it. He's going to put in the work. He's going to be on his grind. I definitely believe he's going to be one of the best in the game. But you have to be cognizant of the kind of position that you're putting yourself in because there are uncontrollable situations that exist in the sport of professional football. And when you're not sensitive enough to that and you don't guard against that, you can put yourself and your team in a precarious situation. And it's just unfortunate to listen to Josh Norman talk so much about this kind of stuff because he doesn't realize what he's doing. I hope he's ready because he had better be ready considering how much talking he's been doing. Um. Let me tell you what I think is going on here. Josh Norman, when he hooked up with Odell Beckham last year, and Odell, the most receiving yards in the history of the NFL through his first two seasons. Odell, when they did a survey of the most famous athletes in the world, the most famous football player worldwide was Peyton Manning at the time. The second was Odell Beckham. Uh, Odell was this young, as you mentioned, stud superstar receiver. And Josh Norman was able to get under his skin the first game when they first linked up. He got under his skin. And it resulted not only in Odell losing his cool and getting himself into trouble, 
but also I think maybe even Odell dropping a couple passes where he burnt Norman. He he was open, uh, and and the ball was in his hands, and a guy who, other than those two passes, has never dropped a pass in his NFL career suddenly drops a pass. So I think he did get under his skin, but I think what's happened is Odell has returned the favor right now. I think Odell Beckham um, has pointed out that the reason people were talking about Josh Norman is because of Odell Beckham. And here it looks to me like Josh Norman's trying to disprove that theory by talking about a whole lot of stuff that's not Odell Beckham. Now, of course, he's going to be asked about Odell. And I agree with you, Stephen. I thought he spoke irresponsibly about it, maybe getting himself into a little trouble there. Um, he, he adds Demarius to, the, to, to who he's talking about. Which we about. will get into later. We're going to get into it. He adds the commissioner. Which he, we will get I into. I mean, like, he's, he's talked about everybody. He's talked, but, but it's... It, Odell has succeeded, it seems to me, in getting under Josh Norman's skin, now in the offseason at least, um, in the preseason, the way Josh Norman succeeded in getting under Odell's skin. That's what this seems like to me uh, on, on many topics, but certainly on the topic of, of Odell, who, by the way, had he not dropped those two passes, as it was, six receptions, 76 yards, the game-tying TD in the fourth quarter, had he not dropped those two passes, would have been about 175 yards and two touchdowns. I think Norman is feeling a certain kind of way about that. Well, you could say that Norman's feeling a certain kind of way about that. I don't think that's what the case is. I don't think that's he's feeling a certain kind of way about that. I think that he's feeling himself because he thinks of himself as the best cornerback in the world mm -hmm. uh, that has a huge contract that's overcome a lot of barriers, which he has and should be applauded for and commended for. The flip side to it is that you've got to have the foresight to look ahead and think about the league that we're talking about here. This is the National Football League. Even though he could just be talking out of you out of his you know what when you sit up there and you say hey well you know i've spoken to plenty of guys it's hits out on this guy etc cetera, etc cetera. you're clearly talking about what's transpiring on the football field i'm simply saying that the nfl is watching it because once you go up against odell beckham jr sure. you're going to find yourself in a situation where it's going to be called tight and when things are called tight who does that usually work against it works against the defender not the offensive player who's running his routes and we're talking about an elite receiver in odell beckham that norman jr. can't do anything with changer. anyway well norman couldn't do anything with him in the first in the first link up go ahead no no, no i wasn't going to interrupt you sorry all right yeah, so, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm let you look at you look at odell Clearly, he's got lightning speed. He's got mad skills. We all know this. Josh Norman's got some stuff to prove, and let's just put it out here. When I speak to NFL, I am no, you know, I, I defer. The reason why I know I know so much is because I speak to the people who actually do know. It's not that I'm watching and scouting myself and saying I'm not at a football practice and I'm saying I know what I'm seeing. No, it's not just that. Is that I got this Rolodex in my phone and I pick up and I talk to Hall of Famers who played a particular position. I talk to aficionados who cover this sport for decades. I talk to coaches. I talk to, to GMs. I talk to these people, okay? And so what happens is they enlighten you about what's going on. When we talk about Josh Norman, I bring up the name Josh Norman. Every single individual, I'm talking about all pro all-world Hall of Fame corners. I'm talking about all-pro, all-world Hall of Fame wide receivers. I'm talking about coaches. I'm talking about scouts. Every single individual that I've spoken to about Josh Norman has said this. He's very gifted. He works his tail off. He deserves credit. However, he's not the fastest corner in the world, A, and B, he's limited with what he can do. Now, to Josh Norman's credit, when he and I have spoken, he emphatically debunks that, says guys ain't watching film. There's been plenty of times he was in one-on-one -on -one situations, not just benefiting from a zone scheme. He always says that. But they say, look, he has limitations. He can't cover the quicker receivers. He can't cover dudes in the slot. This is what they say about him. So if this is true, what you have is a situation where Josh Norman is coming into this season anxious to prove himself. Deshaun Jackson sits there, talks with me about Josh Norman. He said, look, man, this dude goes after it. He said, we in practice. I get the better of him. He's sitting there like, where you going? We got work to do. He's mad that the coaches are stopping practice and giving us the, day, the rest of the day off. He wants to stay out there and work his tail off. He goes after it, and it's making us better. This is what Deshaun Jackson said about Josh Norman. So what does that, what does that mean? That means he's willing to work hard. He's willing to do what he's supposed to do. The problem is, here's what ultimately could be Josh Norman's doom. If you talk too much and bring too much attention to yourself, 
you may bring the wrong kind of attention because if there's anybody that can stop him, it's officiating. Mm -hmm. And if officials get in your way because they're calling the game too tight and not letting you go out there and play mano y mano up against that dude that you want to go against, Josh Norman will lose it because, look, that's not what he wants to do. Well, one, of, one of the things that makes him such an excellent player, he's actually one of my favorites to watch, even though he plays for a team I root against, big time. a Giants fan, um, is his competitiveness. You, you think of like a guy like Cortland Finnegan, who's known for like getting into fights a lot, but one of the things that made him effective was Cortland Finnegan was so competitive. And this guy's like a more talented version of that. But now he's got to live up to a $75 million contract. And one of the reasons he got paid is not only due to his excellence, but due to scarcity at the position. Mm -hmm. You know, go find shut down corners. Now, I'm not saying he is one, but elite corners, there aren't that many by definition. But just because you're the best at your position or one of the two or three best doesn't mean you're Deion Sanders or Champ Bailey or Darrell Revis in his prime. There are levels. So it, you can be a level or two below that and still be among the best at your position and therefore get paid that way and then have all this pressure on you to to defend in this day and age where as you mentioned you don't want officiating going against you the rules are all favoring the receivers and you got some killer receivers well, in your division last point yeah number one speed uh -huh. change of direction are considered his two biggest impediment his ability to change directions as a corner but number two and more importantly in terms of his mouth there's somebody else on the Redskins who used to talk an awful lot yes D'Angelo Hall you know, now you might get that from him a little bit because D'Angelo Hall was an, a, a, an elite trash talker. Mm -hmm. Backed it up a lot of times to be respected. But when we were at Washington's training camp in Richmond, Virginia, even though he's straight up because he's as real as it gets, I'm talking about D'Angelo Hall, he was still somebody that clearly saw that, you know, I got to be a little bit more humble mm -hmm. for all the time. It's, I still got it, yep. but you recognize what you can and can't do anymore, and you got to be mindful of that. But I got to so say, I admire a guy who will go and talk the kind of talk that Norman is talking right now. If he backs he, it up. Given the fact that he knows he's in a division mm -hmm. with killer receivers he's going to have to see twice a year. So whether or not he backs it up right, ultimately, yeah. if he doesn't back it up, it's bad for the team. Now he's put everybody out there and everything and, and, and you know, is talking and not backing it up. But the fact that he's willing to talk, given the contract, given who he's going up against twice a year, Odo Beckham and Des Bryant, these guys, is, you know... The guys who can back it up, those are my favorites. No, I get it, and I like him. He sat at this desk a couple of times, like Josh Norman. My only issue, I, I like the trash talking, the confidence, is when he's speaking of Odell Beckham specifically, he's saying he brought this upon himself, people are going to be coming after him. Well, it's like he's throwing stones and being a hypocrite because he's also going to be bringing it upon himself as, as well when he's opening up his mouth. That was my only Find thing with that, with that uh, particular comment. The corners don't get hit like receivers. Odie. But still, and whether it's the officiating or people trying to go after him, that type of thing. So, uh... We're going to stay with Norman here. So since he's joined Washington, he's been outspoken about his team's name. The Redskins very critical of the commissioner, Roger Goodell, along with taking shots at Demaryius Thomas, Odell Beckham Jr. And we can't forget he's joined Fox as an analyst during the season and didn't communicate that to some of the higher up. So, Stephen A., if you're Washington, how are you feeling about Norman? I'm worried. I'm very worried if I'm the Washington Redskins. I'm saying, my God, I hope he backs this up, not just because we want to pay him $75 million over the next five years, guaranteeing $50 million. It's because of the attention he's bringing to the franchise, uh, which may ultimately work against us. You have to remember that the Washington Redskins uh, worked diligently to get itself beyond the RG3 era. Well, what was the RG3 era? The RG3 era involved a sensational rookie who in the eyes of many started feeling himself too much that the Washington Redskins became, you know, RG3's Redskins. And as a result of that, they felt or they, 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 they perpetrated the, the narrative that the, his head got too big for him. And as a result, it divided the team to some degree, and we weren't able to get things back in order until we got Kirk Cousins up in the house. How accurate that is is open for debate, but that was clearly a perception that RG3 had to fight himself through. He ended up in Cleveland. It's not just that Cleveland chose him. He ended up in Cleveland because nobody was knocking down RG3's door to get him to be their quarterback. Why? You know, the bottom line is that when you look at him, he's a good guy, never gets in trouble with the law, highly intelligent, okay, a stabled individual. He just got caught up in the brand that was RG3 instead of RG3, the football player. The Redskins worked diligently 
to move beyond that. Now here comes Josh Norman. You're Josh Norman, and you're talking a lot. You're bringing that kind of attention to you. Now, I don't want to come across like I'm somebody that's getting on Josh Norman, uh, you know, like, like he's so wrong. I'm not saying that. I'm saying he needs to be concerned because he needs to understand that his words, what comes out of his mouth, resonates to a point where it transcends him and starts affecting the other people around him. He may very well be able to handle it. He may well be able to live up to it. But the question is, what about the troops around you? You got a potential for a huge divide existing in the Washington Redskins locker room. Kirk Cousins is in a contract year. He signed a one-year offer, franchise tag, $19.95 million. Two of his wideouts, Deshaun Jackson and Pierre Garçon, are not only in the last year of this contract, but were sitting at home in the offseason when they watched the Washington Redskins draft this kid, Dachson, out of TCU, who's going, to, who's, who's going to be considered a stud at the receiving spot, which means that one of them could ultimately get replaced if, indeed, the opportunity presents itself for that to happen. Alfred Morris is gone. Matt Jones, your, your running back, hurt his shoulder during the preseason. As a result, what's happening there? It's going to be more of an onus on guys on the offensive side of the ball. So you're competing with them in practice. You're getting the better of somebody, or they're getting the better of you. You never know what kind of divide that can create on the defensive side of the ball you and Breland are considered the studs because y'all are y'all are considered one of the top four court uh, secondary tandems in all of football so when you look at it from that perspective you got to show up and produce so you've got your pressures you've got pressure around you because of the pressure that's on those guys to produce and I'm just saying that if everything comes together it's butter. It's all good. But the second something goes wrong, you never know where it can fragment and fall apart. And if you're Josh Norman, you're not being sensitive enough to any of that. And that is what can lead to the Redskins disintegrating before our very eyes, which is not beyond the realm of comprehension. So I just think it's something that he should watch himself with as it pertains. And if I'm the Washington Redskins, I'm very, very concerned because we're, we're making news. But at the same time, we're doing a whole bunch of talking. And, and, and the eyes of scrutiny are going to elevate exponentially. And I don't know if this team is equipped to handle it. Remember, I didn't pick them to win the NFC East. I said on paper they should win it. Mm -hmm. But the reason I didn't pick them is because I accused them of being allergic to prosperity. Remember I said that. That's my concern about the Washington Redskins. Um, Washington, if they feel like they spent their money wisely, should like this. But this comes down purely to whether or not he produces, and even then. What does that mean, and even then? You can be a shutdown corner, which he's not exactly. He's a different kind of corner. But even if you're a shutdown corner, and do a job on a guy like Odell or Antonio Brown or to stay in the division, Des Bryant, or think how many great receivers there are in the league. We were talking about it yesterday. There's DeAndre Hopkins and A.J. Gray. There's so many guys. And you could be shutting them down all afternoon, and it takes one play where you get burnt. And it's going to be, sometimes it's not even your fault exactly, but it's going to be obvious for everyone to see. And you will be the GOAT when you've drawn that, and by GOAT I don't mean greatest of all time, I mean the bad guy, the <laughs> villain, when you've drawn that kind of attention to yourself. So you have to produce. And this coming from a guy, by the way, who's joining a team now where the quarterback has come out and said, I want to be like the Spurs. This is like the Spurs signing Allen Iverson in his prime or something like that. Well, that doesn't make sense. Now, now, kids, I'm going to take you back to 1977 for a second. Oh, my God. This better be good. Reggie Jackson is signed by the Yankees before he was known as Mr. October. And he sits at a press conference. The Yankees have just been swept in the World Series by the Big Red Machine, humiliated in four straight games. And Reggie holds up a bat and says, the Yankees will never be embarrassed again as long as I'm holding this in my hands. And the papers and, the, and, the, and this baseball was, was huge at the time. The Yankees were huge. Everyone went crazy, lost their minds. You're, you're, what are you saying about Thurman Munson, the team captain at the time? What are you saying about this team that just got to the World Series? How dare he this, this, and this? But he put all that pressure on himself. And in the World Series that year, he came up his first year with the Yankees and hit already hit two home runs in that World Series so far. It's and in good. game six, hit three in a row off the first pitch, off three different pitchers each time. The final one went to dead center field, a huge shot. And the Yankees won the World Series. Um, now, now, if... Hold on. Yeah. I have to interject. Go ahead. Baseball is an individual sport uh. where somebody can walk up to the plate 
and literally change the complexion of entire game with one swing of the and bat. And though that's not football, yeah, and though football, that's not quite the not, same, it's not the same. It's not quite the same in football, but the cornerback position in particular, you are charged with going up against those home run hitters. So as I said, you can strike out that home run hitter all day long. But if Odell Beckham or Des Bryant or whether it's out of the, you know, AFC, Antonio Brown, whoever it is you're up against, burns you one time, particularly with the game on the line, you have not lived up to it. So I say all this to say the following. If I were Washington, this is usually not the way football works. If my quarterback just said I want to be the Spurs, I don't love this, and et cetera. But if I'm a Washington fan and this dude comes through in the end, that's like the greatest. That's the athlete you root harder for than anyone. I agree with the that. The one who wait, wait, says, wait, wait, who wait. goes out on a limb and says, against all odds, I'm going to do the impossible and then does it. Yeah. But now he's got to do it. I agree with it, but it still doesn't make sense. And here's what I mean by that. Because there's no way on earth that that Josh Norman could come. Josh Norman is going to be in Barry's defensive. He's a defensive coordinator for the Washington Redskins. He's going to put him in zone schemes a lot more often than not. Everybody's been talking about that's why Josh Norman in a Washington Redskins uniform was the perfect fit because of the zone schemes that they employed right. in the nation's capital. What I'm saying to you is that a lot of that, what does that mean? That means your, your, your success is dependent on people all the time. Rarely are you in that mano y mano kind of situation where you and your excellence comes shining through. You're dependent on everybody else. You're covering areas as opposed to covering a man. But in the not end, only that, not only that, in the end, there's going to be the camera it, on you hold it, covering hold it. another dude. Did he catch it or yeah, not? Yeah, no, no. yeah, you can say that, but at the end of the day, again, if you've got a zone scheme, then ultimately your success is dependent on the pieces around you. Josh Norman is sounding like he's going to have an opportunity to be mano a mano. But here's the thing. People are going to be demanding. That's exactly what they say. When you go to the, when the Giants go up against the Redskins, nobody want to hear about no damn zone. Mm -hmm. We heard you. Excuse me. Where, where are you? We we want we don't want to see Odell on the right and, and 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 Josh Norman on the other side or Josh Norman in the middle. Oh no 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 no. You you've been you, you've been talking. We want to make sure we, when Odell Beckham if Odell Beckham Jr. goes to the bathroom, you should be outside the door. <laughs> exactly. You should be outside the door. If 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 Odell Beckham Jr. runs across the middle, you should be there. If Odell Beckham Jr. runs to the sideline to talk, matter of fact, to why aren't you with door, Odell right you now? Where's Odell? You should, you be, should there. be there. That's but what beyond, the point. But beyond that. Next time you think Odell is going to drop two passes against you, don't let him go for two touchdowns and 175 yards next time. Just you can't do it. You can't, how, do you, how do you go to work the next day? All right, we'll leave it there.